Thank you and uh, hello everyone. So I'm happy to share today my experience uh, with Seed Science, uh, the organization that I lead about solving educational challenges through creativity. I would like to start uh, with a quote uh, from, uh, from a famous Italian science journalist and communicator and also a TV host, uh, Piero Angela. He once said, creativity is the ability to ask yourself a question that has not yet been asked. It takes a moment to, to go through the sentence, but when you do and you catch the meaning, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, and I think it says also that creativity is about creativity, is about uh, innovation, is about asking ourselves questions. So let me start uh, maybe with the first one. W what is my background? Uh, so I, I am, or at least I was a chemist. I studied chemistry and um, during my PhD, I had the opportunity to uh, volunteer in a few educational and environmental projects in uh, South America and in African countries. And I started learning about uh, the education context, especially in countries in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So how is it like over there? Um, well, it's a challenging context. What you see here is a classroom from Tanzania and uh, you don't see all the students in the classroom, there are more. On an average, I might say that there are, there are at least 40, 50 students per teacher in a classroom. And uh, yes, facilities are normally not that good. Access to uh, running water, uh, electricity to the internet is limited. And it's also limited uh, the availability of didactic materials and especially of um, materials that you might use for science experiments, for science activities. So, yeah, it's, it's a big challenge for teachers who are, yes, prepared to teaching, but uh, I would uh, dare everyone to be effective at teaching in such a context. Uh, very often I think of um, the teachers we work with as superheroes, because that is not easy. The majority of teachers, unlikely, they end up having a teacher-centered method, which means basically that they take the textbook, the old copy that they have at school, they read from it, they copy on the blackboard some definitions, and uh, what do the students do? Well, they listen. They listen to the teacher, they repeat definitions, they memorize concepts. They don't really get to uh, master uh, the topics. They don't manage the easy to connect topics with the real life, with the uh, everyday life. So it's, it's a problem in general, but uh, our approach is to convert this problem in a challenge. And yes, together with them, make this challenge become an opportunity. How do we do it? So, yeah, it takes creativity to find a solution to this. And uh, it doesn't come easy. Um, you know, especially when education is teacher-centered, we think of it as something that um, is not providing quality. There is maybe, there are not many skills coming up from there. Even though creativity is among the main skills that nowadays we think should be taught in a classroom. Uh, some of them are here uh, that we think of as 21st century skills, so collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. But yeah, what happens if we need creativity to solve the problem, but creativity is not developed at the school level? So it's, a, it's something that we need to solve our challenge but at the same time, it is part of our solution. We can think of it as um, a dog chasing its tail. And they can go run around and uh, it will remain the same way. It takes uh, maybe a particular approach. Uh, as a scientist, and luckily I don't have a, a big uh, artistic background, uh, but I, I like to think of creativity as uh, a sort of puzzle. You know, when we have a puzzle, we have all the pieces in front of us. And then we can take these pieces and combine them as they are. And maybe it will work, but probably uh, it will not be the perfect match. 
to me, creativity is more of taking these pieces and find uh, finding the right combination to solve the problem, which is not easy at all. So at Seed Science, we do this we solve this challenge, we make it become an opportunity by working with teachers. We train them, we collaborate with them to make education student-centered. And uh, what is the training about? How do we uh, bring our solution? Well, it's mostly about uh, teaching method. So we are not like uh, we are not presenting something about knowledge. We are mostly working with them to have an approach that is focused on making students have fun at school, on making them learn in a practical way, on making them work together, on making them be become the protagonists of the actual lesson. And uh, yes, of course, uh, while we propose this method to teach through hands-on activities, we also uh, use topics as a means, and these topics uh, can change every time. Uh, they, here is an example. These topics depend on um, uh, what is uh, uh, relevant for the school curriculum, of course, uh, what is relevant to the community, and what, what might be of interest to the teachers. We address these topics with uh, many hands-on activities to pass on the method to the teachers. And uh, I told you, okay, there are no materials in schools. So how do we do these practical activities? Well, I think this is the main point where creativity comes in. Because when you have no money, when you have very limited technology around, uh, then you have to uh, be able to use what you have. And uh, we might not realize it, but we have a lot. Looking around us, there are so many materials that can fit a purpose that maybe we didn't think of at the beginning. So using cheap, uh, maybe even free, recycled, reused, locally available materials is a big part of our solution. Uh, teachers look at topics, they uh, ideate and some activities and they see what they can use around to fit the purpose. It's something that on an individual level works, meaning that teachers, yes, they manage, but it, it really makes a difference when they can work together. So when teachers collaborate, then they can have, they have, they can have the biggest impact. And the training is just the initial part of our approach. Uh, that is when they become a team. Then they start collaborating, they start being creative together and uh, organize science club activities for the students, um, organize events to approach the whole community. Some of them, step by step, become trainers. And a few of them even become project leaders. So the effect on them is, uh, from our side, just amazing. Because uh, for, for many, it represents uh, something totally new. Uh, a way to solve uh, a challenge that they had, they had been facing uh, every day. Uh, and um, maybe some of you are familiar with this, but when you start having fun, also the others have fun. And when you teach practically, rather than reading from a book every time the same way, it is fun for you. So it gets fun for the students. You get passionate about the subjects that you're proposing, and uh, the whole atmosphere changes. And the effect on, on the students, of course, is, uh, is remarkable. Because, uh, yes, they start having fun, they, they become passionate about science. Uh, they start, not all of them, of course, but many of them start wishing to uh, pursue science careers. And they, they break uh, stereotypes, maybe about uh, girls uh, who might not be fit for science. Instead, you can see here that there are only girls, in this case, presenting an experiment. And that makes them gain confidence. Uh, that makes them develop collaboration, communication, critical thinking skills, and of course, creativity in a 
in a few minutes we'll see a, a few more uh, specific examples on this uh, but let me first show you very fast uh, a few numbers in the past uh, four or five years we, we worked and we reached uh, uh, nine communities in uh, four African countries and in these communities we, we trained both in person and in a hybrid mode meaning online and in person 156 teachers and um, what I like the most is that it is not like we train teachers and then that's it uh, the training lasts quite for some time it's about three months where we meet with the teachers once a week and then we still work together uh, the rest of the time with them uh, but yeah you, here you can see for example a picture from uh, the 2021 in Tanzania and um, about six or seven of the teachers that you see in uh, uh, yellow t-shirts uh, in this in this picture about six or seven of them now work for its science meaning that they're trainers they're pretty leaders and uh, apart from one or two of these teachers all the others are still active in our projects they participate in them and sometimes they also um, uh, collaborate in organizing activities and of course this big participation from teachers reflects on uh, on students well, thanks to them we managed to improve the quality of education for more than uh, 12,000 of them and uh, yes as I mentioned this uh, brings quite a good impact and uh, it's a context where uh, creativity can really make a difference uh, here for example is uh, a school in Uganda and these students uh, maybe didn't even ever see a drone but they <laughs> they managed to build uh, a model of one uh, probably this does not fly but uh, yes it's a good representation and if you look at the materials that they used this is absolutely excellent and um, also from the same school uh, with, the, with the teacher here on the left in the center his name is Nimrod they built a, a mannequin <laughs> a mannequin to represent how blood circulation works so they, they, they took these tubes, uh, they, they made them pass uh, through the mannequin body and then they had blood flowing, of course not real blood, uh, so don't panic. Uh, so how, what did they use for the blood? They used juice and in particular juice from um, the hibiscus plant. So hibiscus is a flower that is uh, quite common um, in all countries where we work and uh, we could see teachers and students use it in uh, many different ways and here are a couple of other examples uh, on the left there is uh, Samuel one of our teachers and now trainers in uh, Ghana back in 2018 uh, he participated in our first training in the country and um, he, we were discussing of uh, methods to measure pH and teachers share that uh, they normally use a litmus paper in Ghanaian schools, but that was quite expensive. So something that normally they could not afford. And uh, we, we took a look at an experiment that maybe uh, many of you know about using red cabbage, uh, so the juice basically from red cabbage as a pH indicator. And someone had this idea. So this juice from the red cabbage looks a lot like Sobolo juice, which is the name for the hibiscus juice in Ghana. Let's try it. And it turned out that uh, Sobolo juice, the hibiscus juice, works quite well as a pH indicator and it, it is absolutely low cost. Uh, months later, sometime later, we visited the um, Ministry of Education in Ghana and uh, people there uh, shared with us that very recently they had found out that they could use as well uh, the hibiscus juice as a pH indicator and nowadays many schools in Ghana adopt that local solution instead of using indicators that might be expensive and not really uh, feasible uh, for Ghanaian schools. So. I, I talked a lot about this flower, we can see it here on the right and uh, these are Tanzanian students 
doing a biology lesson, uh, just using this flower, I believe, uh, to show uh, how uh, plants and flowers in particular are made, so the different parts of the flower. And yeah, it's not just about hands-on activities that might be experiments, but it's about a lot more. Because when you can be creative, I think there are no limits. Here it's a, it is another school in Tanzania, and um, these students are playing. But it's not a random game. They are playing um, a role game where they act as uh, water or as soup. And they are showing that the, when they come together, they can actually remove bacteria. So they're having fun in a creative way uh, while they are learning in a practical way. Another example are escape rooms. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this concept. Basically, escape rooms are just fun activities that people do uh, in an informal way. So they're not necessarily educational activities. Uh, you go there in small groups and you are locked uh, in a room and uh, you have to find your way out by solving uh, which is riddles and uh, mysteries uh, from the room. In the past few years, they've been quite um, widely used in education as well, but they're not common at all in African countries. Uh, this is one that we created together with uh, some of our teachers, and it is about climate change. And when we, we, we tested it, and we did this with uh, many students across Ghana, Uganda, and uh, Tanzania, uh, when we tested it, we saw students being completely stuck at the beginning, because it's a completely different way for them to approach a problem, to, to be able to work together. But then they soon understand how that can work. They understand that they had to collaborate, they had to think out of the box to be able to get out of there. In other words, on top of all this, they had to be creative. And uh, I might say that that is the way to escape the condition they are in. Because education in general, and in particular in such context, context uh, accessing quality education can make a difference for your life and for the life of everyone around you. And creativity can be really the path towards innovation, towards sustainability. So uh, in all this, I hope uh, I could give you a few uh, ideas and a little bit of inspiration of how um, creativity can be implemented at a simple level, because uh, to be honest, I don't think we did something crazy. Uh, our uh, idea was just taking the different pieces, putting them together and uh, make, make it work. But uh, what is amazing is the effect that teachers have on students and the students are having and will have on their communities because they are the future of their communities and uh, they are the ones who have to develop the skills to uh, be the future leaders. Even if you would like to propose any collaborations, uh, please do not hesitate to, to send me an email. Thank you all and uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of the conference.